We're still in court, my ex-wife and I, because I bought her breast implants and I'm suing for visitation. Cause I don't, like, I don't want them back, but I should get to see them on the weekends. Like, I'll be like, I missed you guys so much. <laughs> The judge would be like, you have to buy six bras a year for support. <laughs> There's two different kinds. Right? <laughs> we, have a little, we have a little boy together, my ex-wife and I, which I, I had no idea what that entails. Who has kids by round of applause? Yeah. Clap objective. Yeah. Then, um, she got a book called, she got a book called What to Expect When You're Expecting, which is, that's a scary ass book. It's, um, <laughs> it's written by Stephen King in the, um, <laughs> in the six sentence, six chapters, six paragraph, this is a direct quote. Thanks for paying attention. It said, um, in the third trimester, you could expect some additional hormonal changes that may result in mood swings. When I read that, I thought that doesn't sound too bad. Let me tell you what that means in real life. For three months, she was <laughs> mad at me for everything I had ever said or even planned to say. And, and all of that being said, I'm going to tell a story. At the time, I was working in Chicago. I live in Warren, Michigan. I live right, like, right, like I, I shouldn't do that. Like, we, our hand is shaped like our map, so when we're there, we point at it, which I apologize for. <laughs> like, that's, like, people from Italy don't go, I live right here. <laughs> Some old guy in Florida. Come here, I'll show you the keys. <laughs> oh my God, Grandpa's got his map out again. <laughs> He's so old it only goes to Sarasota. <laughs> anyway, so um, so I drove home all night. Um, I got home at 5.30 in the morning. I want to preface this part of the story by saying ordinarily my ex-wife was not mean, but she was in the middle of a hormonal mood swing. <laughs> And I didn't know. I fell asleep. <laughs> While I was sleeping, she got up and started to get ready for her day. And then I found out something very important about being married, and that's this. You don't even have to be awake <laughs> uh, for women to get mad at you. <laughs> and by 6.15, she was fed up with my shit. So, um, <laughs> So she decided she was gonna wake me up and tell me what a jerk I was being while I was asleep. I don't even, I don't care really that she woke me up. It was how she woke me up. She woke me up by poking me in the head. Like, freaking poking me. And I look up at her, she's visibly upset and shaking. And she looked like she might even start to cry. So in my head, I'm like, don't laugh, you know? And then, um, <laughs> With her finger in my face, she said, how do you want your eggs, you son of a bitch? Like, that's I said. I'm like, later, crabby ass, which is, that's the wrong answer. But, but that's 10 times better than my initial thought. Since, since I'm a comedian, I filtered my thoughts. When she said, how do you want your eggs? I was like, apparently unfertilized. But I didn't, I didn't say that. She ran across the house, she locked herself in the bathroom, and I knocked on the door to see if I could help her. And I could hear her in there. She's like, red rum, red rum, red rum. Danny isn't here, Mrs. Torrance. Red rum. Let me digress for a minute. She was mad at me because she had lost her mascara. Uh -huh. It had rolled off the counter in the bathroom into the garbage we later found out. Apparently while I was in Chicago, I was, I was in charge of mascara. <laughs> and no one told me. So now, I'll be honest, I was helping her look for it, but I don't know what mascara is. <laughs> but in this, I cannot tell her that because she would be like, nothing I have matters to you and everything important to me isn't important to you. And why don't we have more in common? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to wake up in the basement with her standing over me going, it puts a lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. <laughs> Silence of the lambs. So instead, I decided I was going to look for the mascara, pretend that I knew what it was, and hope that she found it. 20 minutes into looking, I saw what I thought was the mascara, but it was not. But I go, here it is, but it was the clippy eye thing. <laughs> Do you know, this. 
Which that's tricky because it has mascara on it. So I thought it's at least an applicator, but make no mistake, it is not. <laughs> what does that do? <laughs> Let me. Right, I guess I knew that. Let me rephrase my question. Uh, what does having curly eyelashes do? <laughs> Makes you look pretty. That's a very sweet thought. <laughs> Isn't it? Like, <laughs> I think I speak for all men here when I say this. Ladies, we love you, and we want to care about stuff like that, um, the curly eyelashes and all of that, but we don't. And um, I'm not being a jerk. I'm not the only guy that feels that way. Like, I promise you that. Like, what's your name, sir? Danny, good to meet you. How old of a guy are you? Do you mind saying? 33. 33. In 33 years, Danny, in order to prove a point, have you ever heard another guy say to you or around, you ever have him go, Danny, dude, look at that woman who just walked in. She's amazing. She has a great figure and a pretty face and long hair. Oh, wait, dude, I wouldn't do her. Look how straight her eyelashes are. <laughs> no, no, because we don't care. I was single so long, if the woman was hot enough, I would have did her if she didn't have eyelashes. <laughs> and then brag about it to my friends. I would be like, dude, it was weird when she blinked, but other than that, <laughs> it was hot. <laughs> my ex-wife said something completely different, all pissed off. She said, it makes my eyelashes look longer. You're just stupid. I said the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So in order to make them look longer, you would need an eyelash straightener. Maybe you're not so smart yourself. <laughs> I told you we're divorced. Like it didn't, it didn't just happen by accident. We fought all the time. One time we fought in public, which is horrible. I hate, are you a married guy? How long? That's all right. You don't have to answer. Um, uh, you ever fight in public? That's my question. Uh, no. no, it's embarrassing. I, this would happen. I was at the grocery store and I had the cart. And if you have the cart, you're in charge of it. And I'm, but they don't tell you. They don't tell you the rules till you break them. <laughs> then I'm, so I thought, what is the harm? For one minute, I will just leave the cart. And I'm, I did. I, I, I'm maybe this far away. Maybe this far. I get the coffee that I ordinarily get. And then I come back to the cart. When I get to it, she's at it. And she, and she has the look. The, the women have this look where you, you, know, you, you know you did something. And, uh, then she started to do this thing that I'm convinced all women know how to do. They are wonderful ventriloquists. They could say a bunch of mean shit, but their lips don't move. And so you're the only one that can hear it. like, did you just leave the cart unattended? I'm like, who said that? You know, like I wasn't even, I wasn't even sure it was her. You know why she was mad? Women know, do you know why? Her purse, she goes, my freaking purse is in there. I go, I didn't leave your purse in there, you did. My wallet's in my pocket, I wouldn't throw it in the cart. She snapped, she said, what happens if somebody put something in the cart when you weren't looking? And I'm like, who, who would do that? <laughs> and it's not like you're not gonna notice. It's not like you're gonna get to the cash register and they're like, that's $875. And you, you have a lawnmower and three hams in there and you're like, oh, that's not mine. Somebody clearly put that in when I went for the coffee. <laughs> I had to go. Um, I, uh, last thing, I went to the store for her, for the product. I know, I know. A lot of comedians talk about this, so I'm going to try to handle it as delicately as possible and hopefully from a different perspective. But I went for this, the stuff. And it uh, um, rhymes with pampon. Um, you, uh, that seems like an easy joke, but I was in West Virginia and I said rhymes with pampon, and this girl in front goes, coupon? <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I think we should make a secret code so that from now on, if you have to go to the store for something embarrassing, you don't have to say what you're there for. If you can walk to the cash register and say, excuse me, sir, but the eagle has landed. <laughs> they would get it for you, put it in your cart, come back and go, the blind man walks alone. <laughs> 
And that could work for women, too. If women had to buy condoms, you say, the one-eyed Jack is wild. <laughs> They'll be like, I am the Eggman, cuckoo-ca-choo. <laughs> Here we go, you guys, thanks so much.